Procreate is an amazing architectural design tool that allows you to do so much more than traditional pencil on paper, including working on multiple layers and stretching and warping and recomposing multiple parts of your design as you work. However, it does have one serious drawback as a design tool for architects in that it lacks the capacity to help you design in scale or to a specific scale. But in this video, I'll show you how you can either make your own or purchase ready-made grid templates and scales to help you turn your freehand sketches into more accurately dimensioned drawings. You can find a link to these grids and scales in the description section below. Your newly scalable drawings will make it easier for others to get the dimensions they need from your sketches without having to constantly ask you questions or simply make it easier for you to begin building your design in SketchUp or Rhino. These grids are designed to be imported so you don't have to create a new document each time. Once you open the grid file, you'll see all the different grids, the different spacings. And in this case, I'm going to use a one inch grid that is subdivided into four sections for each one inch. There are 17 of these one inch squares going across and 11 of the one inch squares going up and down. And that is because the document has been designed, the grid template has been designed to be exactly 11 by 17 at 300 DPI. So when you print it, it will still be to scale with the physical architectural rulers that many of us still use. And that's why I also created digital versions of architect scale, engineer scale, and metric scale. So you can import these. They come in at what would be their actual size once they were printed at 11 by 17. And you can see the relationship of this scale to the grid. At the top here, you have the architect's 1 8 inch equals a foot scale. And two of the larger divisions on the grid equals 16 feet on the scale. Now the scales also have two sides to them, just like traditional scales. So the architect's one inch equals a foot is on the top side of the scale after you rotate it. And obviously you'll just import whatever scale you need into the drawing that you're working on. Now let's look at a real world example of how this can help you. Here's a drawing uh, designed for a small house I've been working on. And it was all drawn freehand and I put some basic dimensions on it just from experience. I'm pretty good at estimating sizes, but now I want to copy the canvas and import it into a new grid template background. So here goes, I'm selecting the grid I need. I'm going to go with one inch divided by four subdivisions because it works so well with 1 8 inch equals a foot. Now here again you can see the uh, size of the document 17 by 11 and 300 dpi. So I've got plenty of layers to work with and I'm not worried about that and it will print at 11 by 17 once I print it out. So now I do the old three finger swipe and I paste in my saved canvas I'm going to go to the layers menu and turn it into the multiply blend mode so I can see both the grid and the design. But I can also go into this template layer and um, tap that and maybe dial the opacity back so it's less distracting. I'm not a big fan of designing on grids. That's why I tend to bring them in after the fact. But I've got an opacity that I like. I've got the uh, draw and port it in. Now I'm going to flip it over because at one point I put some dimensions on the uh, living room depending on whether the house was going to be bigger or smaller I was going to go with either 20 or 24 feet across. So I know my grid is one inch and that every inch equals eight feet. So I'll just do a quick subdivision of the grid just to double check and to get a feel for it. And here you go, here's one inch, and that's eight feet all the way across. So the trick now is to stretch the imported layer, stretch the design out until it 
perfectly matches three of those one inch squares because that'll be 24 feet. So I'm stretching it here. The design wants to be 24 feet and now it aligns with the grid and I'm in good shape. Now once I do that, I can still freely move the design image up and down. As long as I don't stretch it again, I won't stretch it out of scale. So I flip it back and let's look at some other examples now of how I can automatically read dimensions off of this drawing just by setting one dimension. That's eight feet plus six feet or a total of about 14 feet across. Maybe I want to add four to six inches for the exterior wall. But now I've got about 14 feet and I can just go around the drawing and keep doing that uh, until it's very simple to use. Uh, I don't need to use a scale later. I can just read the dimensions off the drawing when I'm building my SketchUp model or my Rhino model. And just to double check that, let's bring in the eighth inch equals a foot architect scale. And again, these are designed ready-made to be in scale with the grid template. So I line it up here. I make sure to turn off the transform switch. And you can see we're right about there. What I had is 14 feet in red, goes from zero to 14 in the eighth inch scale. So there you have the process by which I add scale to my freehand design drawings. I hope you've enjoyed this and remember the link to the pre-made grid templates and scales is in the description below, as well as a link to uh, a set of brushes that I use for all these drawings. Thanks everybody for watching and we'll see you soon.